Hi everyone, this is Anjali Baradwa, Project Manager at DMC. Today we're going to discuss how to do project management in Microsoft 365. As a SharePoint consultant, many clients reach out to me to figure out what is the best practice to implement project management in Microsoft 365. Frankly, there are a lot of options. Within the software tools, many people are considering both Teams and SharePoint. Both of them are good options, but there's many options within them. Within SharePoint, you could use libraries, you could use project sites, you might even want to utilize metadata. Um, some clients think it best to have an integration of both Teams and SharePoint. Unfortunately, there is no one size fits all. Depending on the needs of your organization, including your volume of clients, your volume of projects, how long a project might last, and perhaps even your user base, the recommendation would change. So we're going to go into the details of all of the different options to help you decide which is the right approach for your particular organization. First, we're going to start with Teams. Teams is a software tool that is used for persistent chat within an organization. You can, in fact, invite external users to a team as well. A user would be able to post a message, and then other users would be able to comment on that message below. In addition, Teams has the ability to save files. Files look just like a normal folder structure where you can have um, individual files like a PDF or Excel, or you can actually put a folder structure in there as well. What most users don't realize is that files in Teams is actually stored in SharePoint with this button right up here called Open in SharePoint. For most users, this doesn't actually matter. They use the Teams interface and that's fine, but it does have that backend SharePoint capability if you need to go and use it. Another feature that Teams offers is the ability to have additional modules. So um, in your Teams channel, you could have something like a planner um, where you could have tasks uh, that are assigned, look at how far you are within the task, add different labels, et cetera. There's a lot of capability to add other modules within a team. Teams is a great option. So let's look at the pros and cons to using Teams. It's a simple user interface. Everything that I showed here is a very out of the box option with a low learning curve. We talked about how it's easy to add other modules and it's a persistent chat feature. Now, why is just using Teams for projects a bad idea? What happens is every single time you create a team, it actually ends up in a little bit of a silo. There's no connection between one team from another. So depending on some of your volumes, scalability could be a problem. So if you end up with you know, hundreds or thousands of clients and project sites, this could be a little um, overwhelming to consume. There is limited customization capability. We have the ability to create some scripts, but generally speaking, what you see is what you get. There's no landing page for the project. So we'll talk about this more when we get into the SharePoint options. However, when you go to the team, the first thing that you're going to see is the persistent chat option. So that chat could be relevant to something that you're working on, but you really have no control as to what um, your team is looking at when they first see it. Although I mentioned that um, the files are stored on a SharePoint backend, it's not intuitive to how you would get to the versioning or the other SharePoint features that are built in because it is hidden through the team's interface. So this is some of the negatives for using Teams for project management. So what are some of the best practices for utilizing Teams for project management? One, I would start by creating an Office 365 group. There are some limitations if you start by a team and not by an Office 365 group uh, that exist. For example, not being able to create a calendar event. I would also recommend using a structure like having a team for each client and a channel for each project. A number of clients come to me and they have used a team for each project and that might be necessary in some cases, but again, depending on your volume, this could get very um, overwhelming with the amount of teams that you're now creating. I would also consider using a hub site to tie multiple teams together. A hub site is a SharePoint feature that allows you to tie sites that are in various different site collections, um, which a team is from the back end SharePoint, um, all together. So let me show you an example of what this would look like. 
Here's a demo team hub site. So for example, I have customer A and I have customer X. And so depending again on how many customers we, customers we have, we could add all of our customers across the top and be able to navigate from one to the other from a central location. Um, one negative again with doing it this way is that this is a manual process. Um, you do have to create the uh, hub site and then you have to associate each individual site with it and then um, add it up to that navigation type. So there is some you know, manual steps that would be involved and without consistency, uh, you know, might always not happen. And finally, I would implement appropriate permissions to maintain governance. Um, if everybody is able to create a team and everybody is able to create channels, um, once again, you can end up with a maintenance nightmare and a number of different projects that is very hard to uh, find anything and your searchability becomes decreased. Our next option that we will be looking into is utilizing SharePoint and document libraries with folders. So let me show you what this looks like. This is an example of a SharePoint internet landing page that we've created at DMC uh, to represent Contoso Electronics. So on this landing page, you have information um, that management wants to send out to your organization, like um, you know, what's new happening within the company, what's our industry news, perhaps some changes in medical benefits that could be very important, et cetera, perhaps some calendar events. Um, through this global navigation, we would be able to navigate to our project sites. So the example of using a project with libraries would look something like this. It very much replicates a file share that has a folder structure for every document that you want to store. So essentially what you would do is that you could create a client folder and then you can create folders underneath that for each project and then store your folders accordingly. So an example of this would be um, looking at this particular file. So what are some of the advantages that you find in the SharePoint user interface that you don't find using the Teams interface? So I'll show you just a few real quick. Number one, you have the version capability. So by clicking on the ellipsis and version history, you're able to see a previous version of a document and be able to restore it or just refer back to it, see who changed it and at what time. That's native SharePoint functionality. Another nice feature is the ability to click on alert Alert Me um, will send you a notification anytime anything within that either folder or actually a document itself has changed. So if it's a document that's really important to you and perhaps it's something that your team is working on, you can set an Alert Me and automatically get a notification when that happens. Finally, there is this sync capability. So sync is basically using OneDrive sync to create a version of this document um, on your PC itself. So you don't have to come to SharePoint every time you want to interact with a document or upload additional documents to this library. So this feature is um, exceptionally useful. With the OneDrive sync option, you're able to look at your documents in SharePoint as you would through a file explorer. From here, you can drag documents into an email, upload them from an email or other areas of your desktop and be able to um, edit them right from this user interface. Now let's review the pros and cons to utilizing SharePoint uh, with libraries and folders. The pros are pretty much the same as what you see with Teams. It's a very simple user interface. It has the out of the box option. There's no customization really required to build that solution. It's a very low learning curve because we're using the familiar folder structure. What's new is that it's part of the company intranet. That ability to share message from management um, across to all users uh, can be a huge advantage to utilizing SharePoint. It also has a lot of customization capability um, within SharePoint itself. Now the biggest con here and really the only one is that we're really only addressing documents only. So if there are other things that you would like to manage for a project, such as tasks or the chat feature, or perhaps a list of issues, um, this solution really does not work with that particular need. So what are the best practices if you do choose to use SharePoint libraries with folders? 
I would suggest finding a logical separation of the documents. Now you could have just one document library and put every single project document in there. However, there are some limitations with SharePoint views. Um, for example, if you're trying to look at your documents and you have more than 5,000 appear, um, that could cause you some issues. So we use the example of creating a library for each letter of the alphabet. Make sure you utilize your OneDrive sync options and provide your users with training on this. You also want to use SharePoint groups for permissions. One of the biggest challenges that SharePoint admins have is permissions. And the reason why they get to that is because they individually manage permissions and um, end up with a maintenance nightmare. So take advantage of SharePoint groups. It really makes things easier. And finally, I would say creating a good navigation. Um, being able to navigate from one location to the other, being able to get back without being lost within your SharePoint implementation is key to a successful SharePoint implementation. Our next option that we will explore is utilizing a SharePoint site for each project and using document libraries for the various types of document types that you would be uh, collecting. So what does that look like? Utilizing the demo site that we've created for Contoso Electronics, I'm going to navigate to that project site using my global navigation. So in our example here, we labeled it Project ABC. When you first come to the project, you find a landing page. Your landing page can consist of things like news, calendar events, quick links to other areas of this project, um, maybe perhaps recent activities. A number of our clients have integrated third-party systems into their SharePoint site, and so we have dashboards that give real live financial data of what's happening with the project, or perhaps a tie-in to your CRM with contact information of um, who are the clients for your particular project. There's a lot of customization capabilities right here on the landing page. Then on the left, you have the various different modules that you'd like to add to your project site. So in this case, we have multiple different document libraries, including drawings, manuals, transmittals, and even the ability to grab from templates to create the latest and greatest template of a manual, for example, and put it into a document library. So let's go back and review the pros and cons to using a project site for a project. Now, specifically when we're talking about libraries, again, it's part of the company internet, we talked about that. The project has a landing page. You have the ability to do this in a manual process. However, if you automate it, you get this consistent project structure every time you create a new project. So therefore, when you have new people come in to a project that might already be going, you don't have to kind of train them and they don't have to dig around to see, you know, where is that information that they're looking for. So the consistent project structure is really key. Um, you have the ability to uh, add multiple modules, like we talked about tasks, issues, different libraries quick links, calendars, things like that. And one of the key reasons to why you would differentiate into different document libraries instead of just one is that you have the ability to create different permissions. So if there's a department in your um, group that would have access to one document or maybe read only, but they would have the ability to fully contribute to another, this might be a good option to separate them by document libraries. Now, what are some of the cons? Um, if you do, go the automation route, it does require some customization. So this is not something you can configure to work out of the box. Now that you're getting a little bit deeper into SharePoint, you do require some basic training. I don't think this needs to be long, but a 15 or 30 minute SharePoint training lesson will um, go a long way for your users to understand how to use the system. And then going back to that OneDrive sync, because the sync works at the library level, you now have to sync multiple libraries for one project. So perhaps not a big deal if you have one project that you're working on for a long time, but if you're somebody who works on 15 different projects at any given time and you have a whole bunch of libraries, this might be an inconvenience for you. So what are some best practices if you go down this route of using SharePoint sites with libraries? Utilize the OneDrive sync, still use the SharePoint groups for permissions, create that good navigation option like we talked about, and finally automate it. Make sure that you create a template based on your company's needs and automatically create it every single time a new project is uh, needed and have some type of trigger like a SharePoint list or something along those lines.
Next up, we have utilizing SharePoint project sites, but instead of using document library, we're using metadata. Metadata is a very simple concept. I do have a blog um, out there for it on dmcinfo.com as well, but simply speaking, it's the ability to tag documents with information without having to create a folder structure or open that document to find out what that document is all about. So let's take a quick look at what a sample um, project site could look like with metadata. So again, it's very similar to the other one. We have a landing page. You could add the various different modules to it. We're still part of that company intranet and structure. However, instead of having multiple document libraries, we only have one document library. Now you separate the documents based on the pieces of metadata. And in this instance, we're using document type and transmittal. You can bulk select multiple documents in order to update um, multiple pieces of metadata at the same time. And so there's a lot of capability built into SharePoint to allow this to be a very simple process. So let's go back and review the pros and cons to using uh, SharePoint sites with metadata. So again, part of the company intranet, part of a landing page, we talked about the consistent project structure um, and the multiple modules. Basically, one of the big advantages is now you only have for each project one library to sync, and you also have the ability to filter by metadata. So if you weren't sure if it was a document that ended up in a drawing or it ended up in your transmittal folder, you could instead say, show me all of the documents that were created within the last year. And so now you have the ability to filter by metadata. The cons, um, it does require the customization, the basic SharePoint training is required, but there is a bit of a higher learning curve. Um, after doing this for so many years, it, just, it does take that extra minute for people to understand the concept of metadata and to um, apply it with their everyday work. So if you are going to use SharePoint sites with metadata, there are a couple of different best practices. So I would still recommend utilizing the OneDrive sync, use SharePoint groups, create good navigation and automate. And finally, I wouldn't recommend using more than three to five pieces of metadata per document, um, especially if you're gonna make them required, which does cause some issues with the OneDrive sync. But otherwise users do get irritated if they have to put in too much inf information rather just than just uploading them like they're used to. So after exploring all of these different options, I do think that it's a great option to have both Teams and SharePoint sites integrated in order to get the, both, the best of both worlds. You now have the ability to do the persistent chat, but be able to see that SharePoint implementation with all of the different modules, the versioning, um, you know, the workflows, et cetera, and be able to do that from the team interface or open it from the SharePoint uh, company internet as well. So this is something that also does require some um, autom customization in order for you to automate it. Uh, for example, we can go ahead and automatically create a team every time a project site is created in SharePoint, but really this is um, the best of both worlds. Finally, I'd like to address the idea of a team being created from a SharePoint site. So this is a new feature being offered by Microsoft. However, um, you have to create a SharePoint site to be their own site collection at the root level, which as we've talked about before, ends up being a bit of a silo. And so there's really no tie from one to the other. So this is a possibility um, if that's you know, the need for them to be kept completely separate um, with you know, searchability and things like that, but probably not my first recommendation. So if you want any help in implementing any of these different options or would like to talk about the concepts of metadata, workflows, automation, or customization, um, please do contact us. Uh, my email address is anjaliB at dmcinfo.com. We have offices around the nation and um, I can't wait to hear from you.